simulation, and uh, some of you have heard about the low and high intensity provision uh, in, in England, and there's an important paper written by Ruth McKinney in com talking about the synthetic competence framework, which emphasized formulation as a meta competence. So it was an important and complex competence in the delivery of CBT. OCD knows a very debilitating psychological difficulty that newly trained therapists uh, confront very often in the clinical practice in the NHS. And, and both clinicians and theoreticians have identified foundation CBT in general, and CBT for OCD is the heart of CBT as an essential part of treatment. And why is foundation so important in OCD? I think, in essence, when patients present with panic disorder, it's quite easy to demonstrate that the catastrophic misinterpretation don't really occur. However, through the other experiments or exposure with OCD, it's a worry future oriented and therefore formulation can guide standardization, intervention, and assist the patient to, to understand that this is a problem of worry and not a problem of contamination or rather avoid that this is problem. This previous research on formulation demonstrated a low inter rate of reliability among therapists in formulating the case uh, and diverse viewpoints in terms of what is considered to be important in formulation. The aims of our study, the three main aims, these are two related studies. One is to explore what the sample clinicians know about formulation, to identify if there is a gap between what clinicians know about formulation and their ability to use their knowledge, and to experiment, experimentally establish whether the training can bridge the gap between what clinicians know about formulation and their ability to use their knowledge. So the first study is a cross-sectional study. We took a group of clinicians um, and we asked them various questions about why they think it's important in formulation and how they use formulation in clinical practice. We can compare, compare their, their answers to a, a center of anxiety disorder and trauma a specialist in the area of OCD and anxiety. Second study is randomized experimental design, which I will get in a few minutes. So overall, we have, uh, we conducted four workshops, uh, sample 123 practitioners in the NHS. This is their uh, the background, some clinical psychologists, CBT therapists, kind of those practitioners who use CBT in, in the NHS. And the average mean of, uh, the average time of, of uh, using, practicing CBT is seven years. So these are not newly trained therapists. All of them had some exposure to formulation. Some had the post-extended qualification training, some attended the workshop where formulation was discussed, and some had specialist workshops in formulation, which is becoming more popular. They rated their expertise in CBT as, according to these numbers, as you see, almost a third of them thought that they have good skills in CBT. But when it came to formulation, 42% of them rate themselves as moderately competent, realizing and, and, and showing that formulation is Truly, uh, uh, complicated skills to deliver. I want to be able to go through all the questions that we asked, but this is one of them asking to consider a typical patient from their care slot and to, to rate how important it is for them to include a specific psychological process in the initial CBT formulation. So there's a list of different, different trans, trans diagnostic processes in CBT, and when we compare the results to Similar to anxiety disorder and trauma uh, specialists in OCD and anxiety disorder, we found that overall there are not significant differences, excluding three main processes. One is safety seeking behavior, which was identified as more important by the specialist in comparison to the group. However, the general practitioners, if you like, thought that core beliefs and strength and protective factor are more important than the specialist group in the initial formulation. So, that's a different context, different specialty. Leading to the side different psychological processes is important in the formulation. We also asked them about their tendency to share a formulation, and the highly specialist group tend to share the formulation in the first session significantly more than the watch participants that can be related to expertise. And in addition, the highly specialist group tend to share their formulation more frequently than the watch participants. They all tend to reformulate, but the specialists share it more. The collaborative process of formulation is more than 
what extent participants use formulations in aid to structure their thinking? So there's also some different questions in terms of how these formulations are made in motivations. We find two main differences here. One is that the general practitioners tend to present a pre-existing model to the patient or the specialist. On the other, use formulation purely in what the patient is telling them, uh, which may or may not be with the specific CBT model, which has its pros and cons, if you can imagine. Two questions about formulation in CBT. What clinicians do they, can clinicians do what they know, what they told us in the first study, and if they can't, can we help them? So what we did here is the aim of the experiment was to establish whether training the formulation in the context of CBT impacts, for this sensibility to create a formulation in the context of assessment, and whether the impact on the ability to differentiate formulation systematically varying in specificity, which I'll get to in just now. So we took a group of 83 participants, we randomized them to the pre-group and the post-group. Uh, they were all invited to a one-day training in CBT flow which was facilitated by the Professor Sarkovskis. And those, uh, all participants need to complete various formulation tasks up to the group before the training and up to the group following the training. The comparison of the between group went well, so we can believe the results are, are worth what to, to take to pay attention to five minutes as well. So we had a, a workshop on the training, which included various role play. There were also a, a service users of OCD UK to part in the workshop which enabled them and the participants to listen to the importance of formulation of their own experience. We presented them with a video, a role play video, 12 minutes video, which was case validated by Adam Jones and Kristen Perkin. And this video included a, 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 a quick impact assessment tool, which was, it included sufficient information to develop an initial case formulation. And the first that they were asked was to create one formulation with some blank piece of paper. These are some of the types of formulations that were presented to us. Some of them are more complex than others. Some of them we believe are more valid than others. Imagine how you would respond if you have this formulation in your initial assessment with the patient. Um, we then rated this formulation, a change, a, we adapted a photogenic quite kind of rating scale to an OCD, and we'll to talk about it right now. The second task was to rate a of three formulation that presented to participants, which formulation is the best for the case, a general formulation, developmental formulation, and also the formulation which we believe based on theory uh, and research is that the best formulation, most relevant formulation for the task, which include the threat comparison in this instance. And to rate the three formulations, I will be able to go into that. So we compare the result of the pre and post group. The group that attended the workshop, their quality formulation was poor, and those who completed the formulation as following the training, uh, the formulation level was according to the line of reserve was within the high average, within the high range of adaptive quality. So it wasn't good, but high range of adaptive quality. The significant main effect on all the different measures of the quality of formulation. And also the ability to differentiate the OCD formulation as the best formulation for the case was had a strong impact on the OCD formulation and not so much on the general and the exact. In terms of which formulation is best for the case, with the rating task, so three group, there were three group, um, there were 43% thought that anxiety formulation is most relevant for the case or the best for the case. Um, and post group only two participants thought that the anxiety formulation is the best for the case and moved into the OCD formulation as the most appropriate one. As we hope it will happen. So in terms of summary, there's a gap between the conditions known and their practice. Even short training can, can bridge the gap, although there's some considerable literature that talk about the limitations of short practice, it's short training. Participants seem to prefer specific formulation overall, but that was amplified after the training. So overall participants thought that the anxiety and also the positive formulation were better for the case than the general one, but it was more emphasized and clearer than for the training. The type of training that that, that was facilitated, that they included in the background, I, I think, a, a James Bennett Levy, a, a directed procedural and reflective model, which talked about disseminating the training, which included providing people with knowledge, a, a lot of role plays, procedural experiences, 
and the video itself I think was a very important 